One, one, two, three. Five, eight, four, three. Seven, one, eight, nine. Eight, eight, seven, six. Four, one, five, six. Two, eight, one, nine. One, one, two, three. Five, eight, four, three. Seven, one, eight, nine. Eight, eight, seven, six. Four, one, five, six. Two, eight, one, nine. One, one, two, three. Five, eight, four, three. Seven, one, eight, nine. Eight, eight, seven, six. Four, one, five, six. Two, eight, one, nine. Greetings, salutations, and namaste. I welcome you and thank you for being here and for joining the Yuan Hellion, a nine to nine soapbox. This is a chance for our community to speak to each other and to have conversations and to express our ideas so that as a membership we can be of one mind. We can profess our ideals because we've talked about them. And we've learned from each other and we've refined our own ideas. We have come together and shared our thoughts in mind so that we can have a purer and more accurate view of what we each feel and how we feel together. So again, I thank you for joining <clears throat> this broadcast. And I look forward to hearing your voice on these subjects. Namaste. Welcome to the UN Hellion, a 9 to 9 soapbox. For me, community has always been about family. I grew up in the church five days a week, Christian schools, all that. Everything in my family was centered around the church. Even when I raised my own family, it's all about the church. And uh, now that I've released the dogma from the religion I was brought up in, I'm left with what was really underneath all of that was community, people connecting, a sense of belonging, a sense that I had a place or a role, service, all these things, and hope that uh, one day I won't burn in hell. So anyway... <laughs> Now love is my religion and community is my chosen family. And for me, it's been a joy bringing a variety of different communities together. And when I look at the different communities that meet each other, or the different you know gatherings I've hosted and whatnot, um, there's a commonality in that. And it's just a sense of belonging. Everybody wants to belong. I want to belong. And for me, community has been just that, where people are celebrated for just being themselves. You know, I'm not shamed for being me. And, uh, and in that environment, that fertile soil, I can become more me every day. And that just like lights me up. It's empowering for me and others around me. And, uh, yeah, that's really what community means to me. And that's really what I'm looking to build or continue building, connecting previous communities are brought together into the next, where we all live together, we host uh, gatherings together, we have experiences, we live a life together in all many of its different forms, bringing so many different gifts and and uh, expressions of this multifaceted one love that I'm experiencing and others around me are together into what I call community. Community. Community came into my life like a conversion experience. 
And I'm not exaggerating because for more than four decades of my life, I had myself convinced that I was the happiest lone wolf I ever did know. So something that I never even felt was missing for my whole life before has become front and center in my life now. Community is my inspiration. Community is my foundation for my chosen family. Community is the heart of my life path. Now I'm still an introvert and I will always be a happy introvert and that has nothing to do with how much I've come to understand about the beauty and magic of co-creating with our gifts in community together, uh, the power of what I know we have to offer one another when we just get to show up um, in, in interconnection and, and discover whatever the synchronicities are that are waiting to be discovered, um, or what it means to remember interdependence as a natural way of being and that we can help each other um, live into more easeful and sustainable lifestyles. I didn't have a clue about any of this uh, based on how I grew up. I was born into a family of atheists and uh, there was no talk of spirit or love. Um, I was taught to be very, very private, not express my feelings or emotions. Um, I was conditioned to be super self-sufficient, uh, independent, self-reliant, don't ask anybody for any help. And I always thought that the phrase, boys don't cry, was talking to me. Uh, just like how I used to say, I didn't go out seeking spirit, spirit found me. It was the same thing with community. I didn't know what I was missing, so I didn't go out seeking community. Community found me, and community profoundly changed my life. It was 2013 when I witnessed um, my beloved and another dear friend of ours um, die in an accident before my eyes. And instantly, I found myself more vulnerable than I had ever been in my whole life. And it was community, unlike anything I had ever known, who held me, nourished me, healed me, and loved me through utter devastation. And this included people I barely knew, as well as people I didn't know before. So it was by this grace that I um, came to know a depth and a purity um, and presence of unconditional love in the human family that I had never experienced before and didn't even know existed. It was my beloved's extended community uh, who showed me this unbelievable capacity, which exists, to hold tremendous darkness, like the community-wide shock, grief, and collective trauma, uh, and still be able to rise together in love and radiate such tremendous light. Um, I can't even begin to describe all the beauty um, expressed in the remembrances and the tributes to ongoing love and connection. And um, that just totally changed my life to meet love this big in community. And uh, if I hadn't lived through it and witnessed this kind of extraordinary community capacity uh, multiple times over in these years that I have been so incredibly blessed um, with community in my life, I never would have believed that life's hardest challenges uh, could be met with this kind of beauty, wisdom, and strength. Um, uh, so this was a really, really huge shift for me, going from deeply 
programmed independence and seeing mainly cultural models of codependence around me um, to getting to co-create new and magical forms of healthy interdependence in community. I remember coming across a quote by Thomas Hubel somewhere around that time also, and uh, he had said, deprivatizing our personal experience opens the door to our common living room. Now, if I had come across that quote just a year before, it would not have landed on me. I really had no idea what I was missing before what I call my conversion experience. Um, but Hubel's words remain an inspiration to me in my own home here, which I consider to be a community resource. And it's also part of a larger long-term vision, um, you know, which includes redoing the interior to be able to offer multiple hosting spaces here. Uh, for the past two years, I've been inviting myself uh, into an exploration of living community as a state of being. Um, and that's whatever that means in any moment with whoever I'm with. Uh, in general, it means, for me, it means living community as a dynamic and transformative state of being because I know for myself, it has meant really becoming someone that I haven't been used to being at all. I now know how much we are not here to do alone and we can't do alone. And also just how much magic we have before us to discover when we come together in support of one another. So I'm excited knowing that there are more and more homes opening up out there um, to become community spaces. And I hold this as part of my vision as well. Um, it, it's part of my life mission of mainstreaming the miraculous and feels wonderfully aligned with uh, my path of living into a new paradigm which uh, is to create new social and civic infrastructure so that more of us can remember just how much more we really are. I'll be continuing here uh, to get a lot of life-changing mileage out of inviting myself and anyone else who is interested um, to inhabit whatever ways uh, for you community is a state of being. Just like love is a state of being, just like abundance is a state of being, and just like wholeness is a state of being. The more we come together as a practice in community, the more we heal separation stories at the cultural level. And so I just love what's made possible by living in community uh, with you. So thank you. Mm -hmm. We are at Yogananda's house, which is called the Self-Realization Fellowship Lake Shrine. In Los Angeles, that's Kristen. So, welcome community, welcome family. Welcome love bugs, welcome warriors of the tender heart. Let's embark. So today I wanted to talk about community, co-unity. And uh, it's appropriate that we are here at Yogananda's house because Yogananda was all about one love, one source, one spirit, one God. And his whole life was reverence and bowing to that one source that we all are. And so all of his teachings were about attunement, attunement to truth. And when it's true, you can feel it flowing through. When it's true, it feels true. And so 
Yogananda taught us how to tune in to truth, how to tune in to the nature of reality, whether it was through spirit or whether it was through science, he married those opposites. And the, the practices that he taught around Kriya, Yoga, meditation, it wasn't like, let's make believe that we're all one and we should all be kind to each other. No, his method is about tuning in to what's already here and the truth is we're already one so we've already won and this can't be undone and we're transistors of energy conducting source electricity connecting to the mother star that's what we are period dot 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 and so we're not trying to convince people of unity and that it's a nice morally upright way of believing it's just tuning into truth so he talked about high god attunement so how does that connect to community well um <laughs> community is one of the highest medicines that we can receive and belong to in this life um, being part of a like-hearted, like-minded community is one of the highest nourishments for the being, for the soul on earth. So it's hyper important that you find your tribe and that you hug them and that you tribe harder and that you find yourself in that tribe because the reality is that we are already one and being part of a community of beings that hold that truth vibration will reflect it back to you and make it real which is why Kelly and Anno and I are sharing about the power of community and the desire to actually create containers for beings to enter in and to connect and to heal and to play and to just share. And with our words, we create those containers. So we choose unity. We choose to attune to the truth through community. And um, I lead shamanic healing retreats in Peru and the highest contribution that these retreats these two week retreats have made to the beings that come in to do you want to walk this way um, one of the highest things that people say that they got out of the retreats was the community the members of the community that were on the retreat the tribe and so um, that's the reason why I create the retreats because rather than just talk about community I actually experientially want to create containers like Yogananda has I mean this whole place is a community center where people come together and they can in community attune to the truth and find peace and stillness and in community your levels of anxiety go way down you feed your basic basic need to belong like our need to belong is fundamental to the human being if you look in your own life many of the decisions you make come from a need to belong that's just a fundamental need whether you belong to um, a group of fans that are cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs about 311 like myself or whether you're part of a spiritual community or yoga community or you're part of like a tech industry like our need to belong to our tribe to our community is vital to our well-being so that is what I want to really instill here that find your tribe and tribe harder because if you want to feel well-rounded if you want to feel seen understood heard if you want to experience the joy of communion and um, 
if you, if you want to reveal to yourself what your superpowers are, why you're here, what your purpose is, what your mission is here, be in community because our purpose always involves other beings. And think about it. Why do we even have a name? Why would I need a name Alexis? Why would I need an identity if there were no other beings for me to interact with? I wouldn't need a name if there was no one else to interact with because I wouldn't have to introduce myself to anyone. So fundamentally, you, you community, give me me. And I give you you. It's the polarity of other, of the beloved other, whether it's God, whether it's your father, your mother, your brother, your sister. We create each other to a ridiculous degree. So my name is Alexis. What's your name? Let's relate. Let's remember together. Let's enjoy the joy of polarity, of communion, of other. Teach me what your signature blessing is, and I will teach you mine. And we will cultivate and nourish that together in community. I mean, this community is fundamental. And I think that many of our, our neuroses and um, our paranoia and our anxieties, our fragmentation come because we don't feel seen, understood, or heard. We, we're not part of of a tribe, of a community that, that, that gets us, that sees us, that affirms us, that validates us. And yes, we do need each other. In the spiritual community, it's almost like a faux pas or shameful to say, I need you, because that almost implies like weakness and you're not taking accountability for your own life and your own reality and you're codependent. And does the earth and all the plants that grow, are they codependent with the sun? because they need the sun for their solar food, for their sun food? No. So we do need each other. And yes, sovereignty, take accountability for your being, but we need the sun. We need glasses of water just as much as we need a community that holds ridiculously compassionate space for who we are and that sees us. So, um, yeah. Um, so I guess my core of my message is find your tribe and contribute and learn how to receive and open your heart to be contributed to by others. If there's one of you out there, I guarantee you that there's a whole tribe of you out there. Um, the tribe of people that I've found that I resonate with and that see me is the hypersensitive, empathic, soft, pure, pup-pup-hearted people that are artists, they're creative, they're healers, they're light workers, um, and they're entrepreneurs, aka reality creators. And, uh, and I love, I've found myself and my life purpose in putting out like a lighthouse putting out a message of for all of those beings that relate to what I've just shared artists healers entrepreneurs if you want to come together and ex in experiential spirituality and come together as a tribe and experience what it's like to actually be part of a juicy fiercely compassionate generous tender-hearted warrior community then I invite you into that if that's not your tribe identify what you need what you want what lights you up what lights your heart up and then google it find it I guarantee you that there's a tribe out there already holding the vibration that you resonate at and the deepest healings in my life and in my psychological well-being have been found in a like-hearted tribe. So, bless you, bless your search. There's nothing wrong with you. You are more than enough. You're perfectly imperfect. There's 
so much opportunity. Life is here for you. This can be, this all can feel like a gift. You can feel God flowing through your veins. You are already whole, holy and complete. And then the rest of life is just an opportunity to enjoy growth and sniff out your next branch that wants to come out. So, thank you for listening. If you're interested in hearing more about my offering, you can go to spiritquestprograms.com and I have a retreat coming up in February in Peru where we'll be working with ayahuasca, visiting Machu Picchu, eating high vibe food, and uh, where the tribe members will be co-creating the retreat with me by sharing their signature offering, their superpower, their workshop. Um, yep, that's all I got. Much love. I am Source, and Source are you. Thank you for attuning in. Peace. So when we decided that community would be the subject of this soapbox you and Hellion, I got really excited. We're starting this new church. We're starting this church of the sacrament, this church of the sacred life. And so as I contemplated community, I imagined, well, what is the community that I want the Church of the Sacrament to create, that I want the Church of the Sacrament to be? Like, what is this community? <clears throat> this is an opportunity to explain like, what, what we're trying to build here. The centerpiece of the Church of the Sacrament is the temple home. The idea is there are plenty of communal homes already existing and more of them coming into existence. And it's usually around social ideals or economic ideals, but it's a group of people that have chosen to come together. What I desired was to network all of them. It was inspired by Burning Man, really. You saw all of these little enclaves of groups. And in the Los Angeles area, the groups kind of came together, right? But it was still a very loose confederation. And we, we were centered around a party. We would get together when there was a party. We would see each other when there was a party. And there so happened to be enough parties that we got to see each other so much that we truly fell in love with each other. We truly became family. There, those years, uh, 1919, 19, 2004 through 2009 in Los Angeles, were the most intense years in my own education when it comes to the concepts of community. I learned what community could be during those years. Up until that time, I had been parts of many communities, parts of cities, parts of companies, all of them somewhat involuntary, kind of voluntary, but nothing that was purely and utterly just my desire to be a part of. And when I found the Burner community, it was so revolutionary. The ideas were so revolutionary to what was already in my mind and what was around me in my environment that it just blew me away. And I knew that it, this was the community that I, this was community. Fast forward nine years, fast forward eight years, eight or nine years, I want to bring that idea of community deeper into our lives. Like, there's a difference between a party 
and a church meeting, right? I mean, most church meetings will probably turn into parties, but at least at the beginning there's a certain structure, there's a, a certain desire to come together in one mind. Right? And like, how often do you sit with your friends and be like, okay, this month we're going to talk about the concept of community. What does community mean to us? And have that conversation. One-on-one -on -one we might have that, but as a group, do we have that? Right? I've been seeing a lot of conversations in regards to how consent is being done. How consent is being articulated. How consent is being exercised. But we need platforms where we can sit and really talk so that we can hear everybody's side and be of one mind within the community. So the desire of these temple homes, homes that once a month have meetings and those meetings would be attended from anywhere from four to 12 people in each temple home. And once a month, twice a month, they get together, they sit, they break bread, and they talk. That is the Church of the Sacrament. That, that cell, that individual cell being repeated 10 or 20 times in a region. And then that region gets together once every three months. And that's a great gathering. So, <clears throat> and if we have regions and temple homes, wherever there's a local burner community, hey, like my desire is to have a worldwide home temple network. That's the community that I'm trying to build. It's like taking the burner ethos and moving it towards a spiritual ideal. I don't know. It's still about each person expressing themselves fully. But it's about creating a container so that people can land softly. A place where you won't be judged, a place where you'll be a little supported while you're trying to figure out who you are. <clears throat> I would say that's, that's, that's the community I'm trying to build. And I'm so proud and happy that you're a part of it. Otherwise you wouldn't be seeing this. So, thank you. Thank you for being a part and uh, for being part of my community. Namaste. You know, it's interesting to listen to the different perspectives people have about church. Um, for me, I'm really not interested in joining another church or being a church the way I was raised. Um, yeah, church for me is so different now. It's so different. Yeah. I'm really excited about this. So, this being an open mic forum, uh, to complete that expression, we're inviting you now to talk amongst yourselves. Um, you can sit and meditate if you're by yourself. Um, talk to, you know, get in the conversation about community, uh, whoever you're with now, and, and or if you're in one of the temple homes, to discuss what community means to you. And then after you're finished, we invite you to post on the on this event page your expression on the open mic aka cell phone and if you can keep it to you know nine seconds to nine minutes that would be cool in the theme of everything nine to nine on oh enjoy nines as you heard him express and uh, that'd be great so let us know and then next month our topic is going to be religion and i am super fired up about this about what religion means to me. Um, yeah, so put on your seatbelts for that one. And that'll be the first Sunday in November. Talk to you soon. Thanks.